All right, hi everybody, Ryan here again. Uh, today we gotta replace a uh, piggyback or brake chamber, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, so on one of mine here, on the parking side, the spring brake side, there was somehow a catastrophic failure here. And you can actually see on the uh, uh, casing here, this is all blown. It looks like something's hit it and bent it. And actually you can feel the um, the plate that pulls it where you normally cage it. I can put my finger right there and it's only that deep. So something has, came that spring has came apart or broke or something in there. So um, the other day I was kind of wondering why I set my brakes. A lot of times I don't set my trailer brakes. I just set the tractor brakes because my valves kind of work independently. They don't always pop. I don't, I don't like setting the trailer brakes if I don't have to. So I just set the tractor brakes and I noticed my truck starts rolling. So I've only got this truck only has parking brake or spring brakes on the back axle. It doesn't it just has service brakes up here on the front axle. See this just has this is a service brake chamber. It doesn't have the, the piggyback or spring brake like the rear axle does. So right now I'm gonna show you here on the uh, the rod length. So you have this maxi or piggyback, whatever you want to call it. That means you have parking brakes. So on this one, you see we got about roughly two inches of rod showing with the parking brake set with the spring brakes, you know, uh, uncompressed. On this side, you can see we only got about three quarters of an inch. So obviously the spring brake isn't working because it's came apart in there. So I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube. When you're replacing a brake chamber, there's a couple different ways you can do it. And I see a lot of videos on the main way to do it. And that's gonna be, you buy a brand new brake chamber like this, and you gotta cut this rod to length. And the way you typically do that is, the way I normally do it is have somebody get in there and hold the brake and you're gonna take a tape measure and with this rod, when you when you hit the brake in there, it's gonna extend this rod and you're actually, so then you can take a tape measure and measure from the casing to the center of this clevis on the truck. And then that's where you'll cut this rod to install it. But there's another way you can do this and I don't see it on a lot of videos or anybody even talking about it, which is the way I've always done it. The service section, if there's nothing wrong with it, you don't need to replace it. You don't have to cut this rod or anything. So what you can do, you can cage this spring brake here. And as you can see, as I was showing you a minute ago, you can see by the, the dirt on my hand, I can only go in that far. So this one goes way deeper. So we can cage this and then we'll cage this side with a pair of vice grips on the truck. And then we can take this clamp loose and detach the piggyback portion and just replace this part. And we'll have a new diaphragm in here for the service side and we'll replace that too. But there's no reason to replace this and cut this if there's nothing wrong with it. So save a lot of time. Um, you, you can buy just a piggyback kit, but they're about as much as what the whole thing is. So you might as well buy the whole thing. Um, and the piggyback kits typically come with a new diaphragm for the service side. But this is a 30-30 brake chamber. This is probably the most common on um, trucks out here these days. And this is, there's a short stroke and there's a long stroke. The short stroke is two and a half inches a stroke. The uh, long stroke is three inches. And the way you can tell is by these castings right here. A long stroke is a square on these and your or the ports whatever you want to call them a short stroke is going to be round and that's two and a half so that's the way you, when if you if you're ever going to buy one of these that's the first thing they're going to have if you want a, a 30 30 brake chamber there's there's lots of different configurations there's 30 24s and 24 24s whatever um so but the, the basic one most common is a 30 30 um, you see the short strokes more on trailers, I guess, but the long strokes are pretty well typically what's on a truck. So, I mean, you can always take it off or take it apart like I'm going to show you, and then you can take it in to any good parts man or parts house guy is going to know 
what it is, but like I said, short stroke, long stroke, you can tell by, like I said, long stroke square, short stroke is round. So that's what you're telling that. So that old one in there, I don't know what's what happened. Um, typically, if I was, if it was the diaphragm blown out because everybody's afraid of these things. And the thing is, the old ones used to have a clamp like this on this side, so you could service it, you could change out that diaphragm and air as well, which um, I have serviced them. You can put them on a, a sh big shop press and you can put pressure against them and you can compress the screen and take it apart that way, but it's very dangerous because this, uh, there's a spring inside here. You probably can't, you might be able to see it in there. Yeah, there's a spring. You can see it, it's black and they're up on the sides. This spring, when it's, it's, it's set at 1800 PSI. So think of it this way. This thing has enough spring, compression, force, whatever, to hold back a truck on a, an incline with the brake set. Because the spring is what holds, your air is what releases it. The spring is what actually sets the brakes. So this thing has enough force to hold back a loaded truck at 80,000 pounds. Um, so you don't want to mess with this. If you ever see one with a clamp on this end, don't touch that clamp. Don't mess with it. This one, I'm going to show you how to cage it on the service side and on this side, the, the spring brake side, how to take it apart. Like I said, and if you buy, ever buy a piggyback kit, this, uh, the spring brake side already come caged and ready to go, so you can just swap it out. But if you ever see a clamp on, these are crimped, you can't take it apart, don't try to take it apart, don't mess with it. If you see one with a clamp on the side, don't touch it, simple as that, because you'll probably kill yourself. Uh, so you don't want that spring coming through the side of your skull or something, so just don't mess with it. So, um, But again, like I said, I see a lot of videos and everybody's, they're changing the whole unit out, they're cutting the rods, and, and you don't have to, if there's nothing wrong with this, you don't have to do all that. You can make this turn into a, 10 or 15 minute job basically just by changing out the pity back section so with that i want to quit talking about this and we're the first thing we're going to do why we haven't disconnected our airlines is i'm going to have somebody release the parking brakes and i probably should chalk this thing and then we're going to hit the service brake pedal and when that rod extends i'm going to put a pair of, of uh, channel locks on the rod then we'll let off of it i'll take the airlines loose and then given this scenario, which I have something going on there that I don't know what, I, I don't want to be underneath there with a, a wrench or socket or impact taking that clamp apart. So I'm just going to take the torch here and I'm going to cut the bolts off of it and just let it fall on the ground and it does what it does. That way I'm not underneath or anything like that. So um, I wouldn't recommend trying it this way at home. I mean, if you're not familiar with these or you're, you're, you're skittish about it, then I would take it somewhere else in this case, but we're like I said, we're gonna we're gonna take the lines off, we're gonna cut it and let it drop, and um, that way we're up here, where we don't have to worry about anything not underneath of it right in our face. So um, with that, we'll release the brakes, and then I'll go ahead and cage that service side. So. All right, so you. So you guys see uh, how that comes out right now. So right now, the brake's not applied. But uh, when we hit that brake, there's another little spring in here. We gotta compress that because we don't want all this going crazy. Because if there's not, if you don't cage the service side, uh, this is gonna pop off. So we'll uh, hit the brake again and hold it. So you can just take a vice grip with somebody holding the brake and then go ahead and let off. And that'll hold that right there like that. So, so that's the way we'll uh, cage that. Now um, I'm going to take these two lines loose here and then I'll take the torch and cut these two bolts on the top and bottom and just let this fall off and then we'll kick it back to the scrap pile or something and not deal with it. <laughs> it's the safest way to deal with it in this in this scenario. So. Alright, so 
I had to go ahead and reapply the parking brakes because if not, uh, when you take these lines loose, you're going to have air. There's air there holding that diaphragm open, but obviously this situation is not doing anything anyways. So um, went ahead and reapplied the parking brakes so we don't have air at that emergency or parking side. And I'm going to go ahead and take those two lines off. Once I take the two lines off, we're going to take the torch and cut that clamp off and just let it drop. So, um, let's see, uh, there's an ABS wire back here that I gotta cut the zip tie on. So, I'll get underneath here and see what we got. Actually, I'll get the zip tie here, cut and get out of the way. These are uh, seven eighths. And then the other thing I'm gonna do while I'm down here and why this is still mounted, I'm gonna take these two fittings off because we're gonna have to reuse those. So it's a lot easier to take them off while it's mounted versus trying to hold everything. Set that off to the side, take the other one off, and kind of keep in mind how these were indexed, which direction, for when you put them back in, sometimes it helps to actually use your phone for something useful and take a picture of it. Okay, now for the scary part. <laughs> I'll cut this guy off. Don't need that to catch on fire. I'm gonna wash my hands off here, and then we'll cut this guy off. All right, so I got the torch set up here, and this ain't uh, most of your do-it-yourselfers don't have one of these because this is about a thousand dollars or so to set up with your tanks and regulators and all that. So everything's set up. So like I said, there's a bolt on each side of this clamp. And we're just going to hack those off and it's I'd rather be up here than down there so so that's why I've, I've chosen to go this route so there we go and here we 
go. <laughs> One side. Just killed it. All right, it's loose and nothing flew apart. I'm gonna grab a hammer and tap it off real quick. Actually. Actually got a pick handy, so we're gonna use that. <laughs> Let me grab that other hammer real quick. All right, ready? And that's it. <laughs> so then you can take the old diaphragm out. And these are what goes wrong. And these are only about five or six bucks, typically. So you can buy these. Uh, it says right there, type 30, three inch stroke. And uh, he said you could take, a lot of times they get a hole in the center of them. And that's really what goes bad unless they're rotted out or something. So take that out. And we'll grab this ticking time bomb out of here. And we will take that to the scrap pile. <laughs> So, there's what it looks like. <laughs> All right, so we got the uh, time bomb off of there. Uh, next step here, what I like to do is take a wire wheel, go in there and clean that surface up all around it so to clamp the seat right, and that way the di new diaphragm uh, seat properly and all that. Uh, so with, with always with a wire wheel, guys, always get a good pair of safety glasses. I knew... When I was a little kid, a guy that was a United Airlines pilot that was playing with one of these and got one of these in his eye and never flew again. So it's, uh, these little wires can come out, so be careful with these types of wheels. Then um, also, like I said, guys, if, uh, we're always doing this type of stuff. So if you haven't subscribed or whatever, uh, please do that so that we can uh, hit the bell for the updates and, and you can always see everything we're doing. You know, we're always doing different stuff with the truck, uh, owner operator stuff, uh, farming stuff, and all that. Weather is turning here. So, uh, that stuff, some more of that's coming up, and we got some other business things, uh, ideas, and stuff coming down the pipeline too. So always watch out for that stuff. But with that, I'm gonna get underneath here and clean this up, and then we're going to cage this guy here, take it apart, and then we'll assemble it, put the fittings on, hook the airlines up, then uh, we'll adjust the slack, make sure the slack adjuster and everything's adjusted right, and uh, go on with life and be done with this. So get underneath here and clean this guy up.
current. I feel good about that. All right, so brake chamber here. Two sides of this. And it's actually, if you can see inside there, way back in there, there's like a little circle, tongue, tab type of thing. So this goes in there. It turns and you can pull on it. We'll put this on. They actually make a socket. Mac Tools, I believe, makes a socket that's like six inches long that you can use on this or you could just take a regular deep well go to harbor freight get a three quarter or 19 deep well socket either one cut it and weld another socket on the end of it or you can just use a ratchet wrench which is what we're going to do today and this is going to compress that spring and actually i'll go grab Guess my better judgment, I'm gonna go grab that other one and show you guys. You guys seen what that one looked like inside. I'll show you, the, you can see the inside of this other one and what I was talking about. Okay, so you guys saw that one, how that plate was all the way in the back. So this one, something's came apart in there. That spring is split, and that plate's like right there at the front where it's something's broke apart or something. Um, so that's the difference. And like I said, typically you'll have something like that that goes wrong, which is not that common. I haven't seen it a lot. Usually the diaphragms blow out on this side. And as, a, as like I said, you can't service this side. You can service the service side for about six bucks and um, like I said it's easier to do just the piggyback section which we're doing right now than it is to replace this whole thing and cut this rod and all that so a lot of times if you're if you're going to rely on the shops um, I would just tell them if you if you got that if you got a, a problem up here just tell them to change out the piggyback and that'll save you some labor time because you're not changing out paying somebody to cut that change this out when there's nothing wrong with it so get underneath there there's nothing wrong with that service side chamber. Um, there's no reason to do all that extra work. So, and that, that might be able to save you, you know, an hour's, hour's worth of labor with measuring that and all that and cutting it. So. Okay, so I'm going to continue caging this spring brake. It's not that easy doing this when it's not connected <laughs> to the truck. Said if you buy just a piggyback kit, they'll already be caged and be ready to go, already disconnected and everything. So, and I might have to put this in the vise. <laughs> That's not. I'm gonna grab a pry bar to.
and it's not easy. <laughs> Especially, like I said, if when you're when they're attached to the truck or trailer, they're a lot easier. <laughs> I think we're about there. All right. You just want to tighten that down until it stops like that. So spring brake side is caged. Now I'm going to show you a little trick how to do the service brake side like we did on the truck. But, uh, so service brake port right here. We're going to take that off. And with the pair of vice grips. I mean, you can do it without doing this, but it's going to fly apart. So get this guy set up and ready. Start the air compressor and we'll cage that service side. All right, I've got this Mac Tools uh, blowgun set and it's got different rubber headed attachments. And what we're going to do is put this here. And then you see it, it pushes that out. So if you didn't, did you get that or? Let's see. Hold that. Just hold pressure on that. Got it? Okay. All right, and that'll hold that spring out. So now we'll take this apart, then we'll put it back in place. Kind of the opposite as uh, we did the other one with the new diaphragm and all that. Put the clamp on, tighten it up, put the fittings in, uncage it, and be good to go. So, go ahead and tear this guy down. Now, like I said, there's what the oh, diaphragm's out. And there's what that looks like inside. There's a spring behind here. So I'm actually going to take these vice grips off. Let's put it out of here because it's going to. Oh, or maybe not. I don't know. It <laughs> froze up. <laughs> And that's why you do that beforehand because you don't want that flying off because there's that spring in there. So, And that's why we do it on the inside because if not, we would have had that spring or on the old one, that spring would have went flying and, and all that. So neat little trick there to prevent that. All right, I'm gonna put this cat back in even though it's exposed anyways. So this diaphragm, when we took it apart, it was flipped kind of inside out like that, but we flipped it back out like that. So if you buy these, they'll come that way. And this goes on the service side. Then the piggyback goes on after that and we'll clamp it down. It's pretty easy. Like I said, you can buy these at already set up it's a little bit quicker but they're the same price and now i have that for parts if i ever need it so grab this guy get underneath here put this beast back in and like i said remember you got to index these same way that they were. So 
there. Time to get that guy. Yeah. Right there's probably good. This is where it gets kind of tricky, trying to hold all this together. <laughs> Get that guy in. Okay, so they're set in, so I check to make sure it's set in the lens. Very pretty well lined up, so I'll grab my impact and start tightening this thing down. Try to keep each side even. Oh, wrong way. Not cool. So it's kind of a balancing act. And you just want to look around it and make sure that that clamp is seated and um, make sure your gasket where you can see it or the diaphragm make sure it's not popped out or anything but um, I'll grab a uh, ratchet and just tighten this down by hand and um, that's pretty much it we'll put these fittings in hook it back up uncage it and um, we'll hit the brake take this uh, channel lock off and um, that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's no reason, unless this is rotted out for some reason or broken off. Um, like I said, we got a new diaphragm in there now. There's no reason to replace this and deal with cutting that rod and, and all that type of stuff and putting the clevis on. So this is easiest way to go. And um, unless you're in that situation where I was in, I mean, it's relatively safe as well. So like I said, it's a little bit sketchy when you got something that's broken there and you don't know what. That's why I decided to take the torch, whack it off and kick it out of the way whether than be down here with the 
with a ratchet with this thing on my face that's not safe that's why i said i'd rather take the torch cut it off and let it drop so uh, i'll grab a ratchet i'll tighten that up and then we'll put the fittings in all right so i'm gonna hit this with the uh ratchet just to make sure down as tight as I can. Without breaking anything. Now I'll put our fittings back in. And I um, actually have to get some, grab some pipe dope for that. Yeah, let me grab some thread sealant for that. I got some standard uh, thread seal on here. This is like the anaerobic stuff that don't get completely hard. And that's what I like, so that way it's, when you're taking it apart again, it's easy to take back loose. So just uh, put that on threads. Put the top one on first. As I said, we want to make sure we have that kind of indexed right, so that looks pretty good right there. I'll go ahead and do the uh, service side. And we'll hook the lines back up. Tight, hook this guy up.
So let's double check those. It's all good. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to uncage this brake chamber, the, the uh, spring brake side. So use our ratchet. And actually, we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. It's a lot quicker. <laughs> so we'll back that off a couple turns. So that's good right there. So now. <sighs> Nasty, grimy trucks. So now that we got air here, what we can do with that, we can just release the spring brake and that it will probably, that, that caging bolt will probably fall out. So I'll do that right now while you're watching. So save a little bit of time on wrenching there. Then um, a lot of guys, there is a little place to store these on the brake chamber, but I keep them up in the truck. That way they stay nice and clean. And if you have them if for an emergency, you've already got it handy. So instead of storing them on the side of the brake chamber. So throw this up in the truck. So last step of this is I uh, just need somebody to hit the brakes and we'll take the uh, channel locks off. And uh, well, second to last step, we'll we'll uh, check our uh, we'll check our slack adjuster, and make sure the brakes are properly adjusted to reset those. Um, so with that, we just gotta hit the brakes and um, take the channel locks off, and we'll adjust the slack adjuster, and that's it. So okay, so the last piece of puzzle, we gotta put a cable tie around that little ABS wire. Once we get underneath there, seven sixteenths wrench, uh, we're gonna adjust the slack adjuster. Make sure you got it the chuck chalked, and uh, you wanna release. The brakes, the parking brake, uh, and then we'll we'll tighten that slack adjuster down, then back it off a quarter turn. So, and that'd be it. So, we'll put this cable tie back around this ABS wire. And of course, put the dust cap back on. And then, like I said, with the brakes release, you want to tighten this guy down. Like I said, there's a nut right here on the back side or adjusting bolt. Turn that clockwise. Until it gets tight. Then we'll back that off a quarter turn. So so get it straight up and down. Once it starts turning, there's an eighth of a turn. And there's uh, another eighth, roughly. So, and it's, uh, that's what you want to back it off quarter turn. Tighten it down snug, back it off quarter turn. Quarter, uh, quarter turn and you're good to go. So um, we had, we just had the brakes applied, we had air to it, didn't hear any air leaks, no air leaks when uh, obviously the parking brake is released, so there's air on this diaphragm here, nothing leaking, um, so we're all good to go. So that's pretty much it. And that, people, is the easiest way, like why, if there's nothing wrong with this portion, why do you want to take that off? and cut that rod, measure it, and all that when you, there's nothing wrong with it. So I always, like I said, buy a whole brake chamber, just do the piggyback. So uh, you can actually buy a piggyback kit if you don't want to take that off like we did over there, but they're about the same price. And like I said, now we got extra parts if we need them for whatever. Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, nobody died or got maimed, so uh, we successfully did a little brake chamber job. So um, that's pretty much it. So. Um, as you guys know, we're going to say it again and again, we're always doing the Landstar stuff, owner-op stuff, truck maintenance, as you see. 
uh, farm and stuff. Uh, it's nice outside getting there. Uh, we planted some oats the other day, so farm and stuff's coming back into full swing. We got chickens and turkeys coming and all that good stuff, so we're watching out for that. Um, other than that, we got some more farm equipment maintenance and stuff to do too, if you're interested in that. Uh, with that, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates. Uh, like the video, as you always should be doing. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.